uh, somebody that, that is irritating yet endearing, kind of like a kid brother who's four years younger than you. Uh, and I completely stole from uh, other sources for the voice. So it's a little bit of uh, that little yippy dog from the Spike uh, and Yippie Dog uh, cartoon from Warner Brothers, like, hey Spike, hey Spike, let's go beat up a cat, come on Spike, let's go beat up a cat. And then there's uh, Johnny Cap from Total Recall, where Schwarzenegger gets in the cage, like, how did I get in here? And uh, Johnny Cap's like, the door opened and you got in. Uh, also, uh, it's probably a little bit of typecasting. I think Claptrap comes out in my voice every now and then. Maybe I might just be a little bit irritating around the office, so I think that's one of the reasons why it seemed like it might have been a good fit. You little, are you a little robotic around the office? Yeah, and, you know. Or you just like wheel around at people's desk and be like, hey, how's it going? How's it going on? Hey, you guys finished That's a little work? closer. Yeah, yeah? yeah. Okay, I can see that now. That's awesome. Uh, my nuance, man, I tell you, uh, I was just telling him the story. When I went in for the audition, they literally had a picture of Randy Macho Man Savage on the sides that day of Torg. And I thought, man, I, I, be, I, I was Mr. Satan at Dragon Ball Z. I'd kind of been doing a very similar voice to what they wanted. And I thought, well, I'll just, I'll just take that and do it much bigger and uh, and it worked and uh, they thought it was funny and then they uh, and then they brought me back you would know that more <clears throat> uh, well I don't know how many hours you put in but I know how many hours I put in I would I would say over all of the, the, the three games and all the DLC I've probably put and and also like some of the other stuff maybe 60 to 60 hours maybe 60 65 hours now here's the thing I get a lot of unearned adoration uh, because I represent Gearbox, I represent Borderlands to a lot of people. But the reality is, is the guys back home that are making the game, they'll put 60 hours a week into uh, their work. And uh, I also put a lot of time into other work that I do at Gearbox, but as far as Claptrap goes, about 60 hours or so is what I would say total. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I don't know how many hours I did exactly. I could only do Torg about an hour at a time anyway, <laughs> uh, to be honest. I literally had the spray and like a, a uh, like a Jolly Rancher blow pop and I would suck on those just to kind of keep my throat lubricated uh, so I could kind of finish it and they would apologize after every line if they needed me to do it again they'd be like uh, yeah Chris man I'm really sorry dude but can you do that again one more time and eventually they were like Anthony would be like just do it again again and better you know uh, <laughs> more funny this time Chris uh, uh, but uh, uh, so I mean the hours I don't know it was too much fun to really be counting uh, to and it was just a great time so I don't know how long long enough that's a very interesting question I don't know that we've had any challenges that we've necessarily needed to overcome other than maybe having too many opportunities so and and, and it sounds like a real jerky thing to say but uh, what happens is is that uh, you know the developers that are doing well they get a, they get way more opportunities to make games than they can actually handle. And so we call it what we call it, uh, we call it uh, opportunity cost, right? So we can only make so many games at a time. We have uh, 260 people at Gearbox. 85% um, of our people are working on one game at any given time. We'll have other people that are working on other things, either landing it or, or, or uh, kind of thinking of, of what a new game should be. But for the most part, uh, most of our folks are like right now, they're working on Battleborn, which is coming out soon. Um, so the biggest challenge is, is to, to, to have to turn down things that you really, really want to do. And uh, because we're all fanboys and fangirls at, at Gearbox, and people come to us, and we'll give you an example. Um, Mad Max Fury Road, uh, year, five years ago, uh, Warner Brothers came to us and was talking to us about, about possibly making the Mad Max game. And I got to read the script for Fury Road, and it had uh, storyboards and so on. And it was it was exhilarating reading the script. It was just one big long chase scene. I hope there's you know spoilers by the way for Fury Road. It's a car chase. Uh, but uh, you know, there were a lot of folks that you know. Obviously, look, uh, we we were influenced by Road the Road Warrior and the, and the Mad Max series uh, originally. So there was um, there was some want to to make that or to work work on that, and we we couldn't do it. You know because we had other things that we needed to do. And so that's probably the biggest challenge, I think, when it comes to business. Uh, we, we bought it and uh, spent a lot of money on it so we could so we could put it somewhere and never see it again. No, it's, <laughs> the, the reality is is that uh, a lot of us worked on Duke Nukem and Duke Nukem Forever. Uh, I was at Gathering of Developers. We were the publisher for Duke Nukem Forever back in 99, 2000, 2001, when I was promising people that it was definitely coming out this holiday season. Yeah. And uh, our, two of our owners, uh, Randy Pitchford and Brian Martell, actually worked on Duke Nukem 3D at Duke Nukem Forever when they were at 3D Realms. And imagine, though, how long it was taking Duke Nukem Forever to come out 
these guys were able to start a company, uh, call it Gearbox, publish a bunch, you know, uh, ship a bunch of games, and then when 3D Realms uh, shut their doors, we had an opportunity to buy it. It was a, it was, there's some love there, right? We, a lot of us worked on that at, at Gearbox, and a lot of the X3 Realms people came over to uh, Gearbox as well. When we shipped the game, it was really to ship this historical game that should have come out in 2001, and uh, you know. Some people didn't really see it that way, um, but uh, that was the game that should have come out in the year 2000, 2001. We felt really proud about being able to sh uh, you know, ship the unshippable game. We basically kicked it out the door, right? Um, yes, we love Duke Nukem, and yes, we, will, we, we want to do something with Duke Nukem. We will do something with Duke Nukem uh, when the time is right. It's also opportunity cost uh, there as well. We, we own a number of properties, Brothers in Arms, Borderlands, Battleborn. Uh, we bought Homeworld. And we have Duke Nukem, and we have another property that, uh, that uh, we've never announced uh, and we won't be talking about. Uh, but long story short, the answer is we love Duke, and, uh, uh, you know, always bet on Duke. Can I be Duke? John St. John might have a problem Damn with it. that, but uh, I'll tell you <laughs> what. We'll I'll break the bull cue. Say there's not enough room for both of you, and you guys can battle it out. <laughs> there you go. All right, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. Uh, how much do you guys ad-lib? A lot. <laughs> I've been doing it. <laughs> he saw that, right? In the and, yeah. Uh, when you guys do the um, recordings, or do you get a very strict script? Uh, I mean, and there's a little bit in there. Uh, sometimes the, you sometimes you just misread the line, and something else funny comes out. Uh, uh, but there is a little bit of uh, uh, chance to to add something, add some flair that you want of your own. I mean, I come from an improv background, so I'm always looking for that opportunity. I didn't really f have to find it a lot, and I, I think Anthony wrote a really good game, and and. I, the, I felt that his style of comedy fit my vein of comedy and, and whatever was on the page, would just it just felt right, felt good. So I didn't really feel like I had to add anything to it because it was, we'd do a line and we'd just all laugh and then we'd do another one and do it again, you know, so. Uh, all right, I'll, uh, when, when creating Claptrap and, and TK Baja, the first game was written by Mikey Newman. And uh, initially he wrote a lot of lines of intent and so Mikey and I and Rayson Varner, uh, one of, the, our, of our audio engineers, basically playing around in the studio. So there was a lot of B-roll footage that never made into the game, but uh, I was constantly uh, stealing some of my favorite lines from my uh, childhood, uh, you know, favorite childhood cartoons and uh, turn, you know, changing it a little bit. And so in the first game, there's a lot more of ad-libbing. Uh, some of the people's favorite lines like the, uh, hey, check me out, I'm dancing, I'm dancing, or the various ones were, were ad-libbed. Um, the second game, uh, Anthony uh, wrote the second game. He came on and Anthony did a really good job of finding Claptrap's voice, basically, uh, you know, from all the stuff that we did in the first game and the DLCs. And so uh, we worked together and he nailed it, I thought. And so he even got into like the cadence of how Claptrap talks and so on. So he would actually write that down. And so he would write this stuff down and it actually worked. And so not as much ad-libbing. I see a little in bit of Claptrap in Anthony. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, he would hate I, you for saying that. Right, actually. Probably, so. <laughs> but uh, but you know it's you know there's there, he actually found a, a great tone and uh, and I, I really appreciated his work on that. I appreciated Mikey's too. Two different writing styles and I think great results from from uh, from all of them. You know. It's going to affect uh, the companies that are trying to throttle the uh, you know data more than it's going to affect us uh, because what happens is is uh, you know games uh, drives technology and. Uh, the caps will be removed or they'll be raised uh, because we're creating games that uh, require people to be on the internet and to, uh, to have that interaction. The reality is though is that unless you're just downloading a bunch of games, you know, you're actually playing multiplayer, you're actually not sending that much data back and forth, you don't have to. Uh, not as much as people might think. So uh, I don't really see an issue there, but if, if, you're, if you're buying all your games and you're having to download you know, uh, you know, 36 gigs or you know, 40 something gigs to, to play a game, uh, that might become a problem. So either the, the customers that are that are doing that, either they uh, buy a better plan, uh, or they go buy the physical product. Uh, right now, you have that choice. And so if I'm if I'm worried about my data cap, I'm probably not uh, downloading 40 megs or 50 megs worth of games. I'm probably uh, buying the physical product and taking it home. That actually happened for me already uh, in Poker Night 2 at the inventory that uh, Telltale did. Um, GLaDOS and uh, Claptrap had a budding romance, and that was uh, that was really cool. It got me a lot of credibility with my children, uh, and, uh, and I, I met uh, Ella McLean and and, uh, and her husband. Uh, they, uh, Ellen actually recorded some voicemail greetings for my uh, for my boys, which is really really cool. And uh, but uh, but 
but the scenario of kind of having like a little bit of a romance, you know, and actually somebody responding to Claptrap uh, that might make him, actually it doesn't matter what you say to Claptrap, he's going to think you love him anyway, so uh, I think it might have been one-sided, but, uh, but Ellen was a sport and it was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm not sure I understood the question again. What, uh, like, uh, what, Put your character I, in a situation. In any situation? I mean, you would I, love that I would love. Uh, you can't have sex with Tor. No, I'm just awesome. okay. that man. I, I, I don't know that. Human I, I don't so know. Like Tor teaching need. a yoga class. <laughs> you know? I think. Mean, you know. I said warrior position. You know. <laughs> <laughs> like that, you know. Now everyone breathe. <laughs> you know stuff like that. I think I just like to see that. That's gotta happen, right? That's I, gotta happen. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. To, you to, your yoga with Torque. Now I can't even say it. I'm getting lightheaded, man. The voice is killing me. <laughs>